Steve Lepper's farrow to finish Taranaki pig farm was attracting complaints from local residents about the unpleasant odours drifting from the property. An innovative and award-winning solution to the effluent problem has resulted in a system that not only deals with the bad smells, but also generates around half the farm's power needs. Niwa research engineer Stefan Hoybeck explains. We were approached by Steve back in 2008-2009 about the general issue of odour emissions from pig effluent. The main goal here has always been to reduce the odour emissions, to basically keep the piggery operational in the location that it is, to be a good neighbour and uh, to make sure the councils are happy. On that front, all those goals were achieved without question there's a dramatic reduction in odour emissions. If you look at other side benefits, um, there is a lot of gas, uh, as you can see behind you, uh, collected here. And uh, Steve is using that to run a, a motor generator, which is uh, providing electricity for his piggery, and also hot water, which is used uh, in the pig sheds for uh, heating some wiener rooms, again displacing old heat lamps. And on the energy front, uh, the farm is more than 50% energy self-sufficient. I mean, changes a little bit with you know, how many pigs they have on site. But it's definitely a substantial benefit cost-wise having this energy here. There's also a security benefit uh, to it in as much that this uh, generator can power the farm for several days during a power outage. Basically, this is your fuel tank behind it and uh, even uh, that you are not 100% energy self-sufficient on an annual basis, you can always throw down um, you know, the gas bubble behind you for you know, three, four days during an outage. Here in Steve's case, the whole thing has been on the cheaper side of things. He was able to dig up to six meters into the ground. He's got a very nice clay soil, which allows to build a pond with uh, steep berms and also quite cost-effective materials have been used. In general, the whole pond system is an approach to make things as simple and as cost-effective as possible. We do know that uh, there are overseas designs for heated mixed digesters um, that give you the same amount of biogas for a given uh, manure input, but the investment costs will be somewhere by a factor of three to a factor of five more expensive than a pond. And even more importantly, um, the operating costs of a pond are very low. You don't need to look after heating systems, you don't need to look after mixing systems. So all in all, a passive system uh, will always be most cost effective. The gas naturally bubbles to the top, gas being lighter than water, um, accumulates here under the cover, rainwater collects on top of it, and that's uh, basically has to be removed uh, not to flood the cover too much. And uh, basically, several days of gas production can be stored under the cover. In this case here, the pressure is not enough to move the gas anywhere. It just basically sits on top of the pond under the cover. And uh, there's a little gas blower used to move that gas down to the generator where it's used. And also on the way, there are several water traps uh, to remove water vapor and condensate and also a little uh, filter that takes out uh, hydrogen sulfide, which is a gas uh, that uh, is not that great for your generator and the motor oil if it's in the gas in very high concentrations. We run 400 sours, birth to finisher, and we're marketing around 150, 160 pigs out the gate a week. We moved the pond up closer to the piggery to get away from odour complaints. That was the main driving force behind it, um, and so we had to go down some tracks. So it was bring the pond up here, and then Steve put to them, how about running a generator after covering your pond? So we went down that track, and this is where we are today. Gas comes in, and the spark generator, so then it's just like a normal petrol sort of engine and then it produces power. It's able to do 40 kilowatts, so it doesn't produce all our power, but it runs in sync with the grid, and the grid then takes up when we're starting and stopping motors, and takes the load, and so the generator can pick it up slowly. The whole system works pretty good all the, you know, most of the time. The only teasing problems we've had is with typical motor, you know, you have breakdowns, so no real major issues. We are on our third engine now though, and we've done about 32,000 run hours on those 
three engines so far. Pays for itself, but that's about all. It doesn't make money, which seems to be the issue. A lot of people think it makes money, but it doesn't. It just pays for itself. And the whole reason behind it was to control, control odour out of our ponds. It could be a great future uh, for covered ponds in the dairy sector indeed. I would say that uh, the drivers will be slightly different. Odour is in general not such a big issue, but of course we all know uh, that dairy farmers do have problems with uh, solids management uh, in dairy effluent, especially with uh, these very big storage ponds that have been built over the last couple of years. Basically what a covered anaerobic pond can do for you is be a replacement for a solid separator. Uh, it uh, reduces um, two thirds, three quarters uh, of the solids, so you don't have these uh, sludging up effects of those storage ponds. You also again reduce the odor emissions from those storage ponds and from the uh, odor that could be released during land application. And as far as the dairy farms are concerned, I think another very important factor is a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Um, you can intercept um, several dozens, several hundred on large farms, um, cubic meters of methane uh, being emitted to atmosphere. And, um, you know, uh, as far as I could see, this covered anaerobic pond technology is one of the very, very few here and now technologies that the dairy industry could use to reduce their overall greenhouse gas footprint. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.